blog post that explains kind of um, you know working with embeddings and uh, vectors in in Postgres. Um, and so basically, it's kind of this idea here, where um, you're kind of translating you know something like human language and the context of human language into um, basically just numbers, kind of a, a vector. And if you look at this here, so we have kind of, this is just two dimensional, right? Um, and say we have something like the cat chases the mouse uh, and the kitten hunts, what does this say, rabbits? Rodents, ah, oh, th there we are. Contextually, that is fairly close to each other, right? You have a cat, a kitten, um, a mouse, a rodent, uh, and so if you translate this into kind of the vector space, um, this context will be fairly close to each other, right? Now, if you have something like, I like ham sandwiches, that is fairly far away from kind of the, the previous two statements. And so if you, if you put this into this vector space, um, what you can then do is you can perform um, vector similarity search um, or kind of proximity search where you're basically looking, okay, um, for two vectors to be close to each other, then there is some contextual relationship. Uh, and so basically now if you're um, putting you know, language or um, images, if you can translate that into kind of this vector space um, and you can store these vectors and then perform you know, kind of the search on it, um, then you, have, you can build fairly, fairly powerful uh, applications. Uh, so it's, it's this link, um, the, the image search with uh, OpenAI Clip. So it's an open source um, model. And uh, the, the interesting thing here is that it uh, turns images as well as text into the same vector space. So this means that you can perform image similarity search, right, uh, by comparing um, the two vectors of, you know, images, for example, uh, but also you can do um, uh, text to image or image to text. So you can kind of translate between um, these different uh, environments. Uh, and so this is kind of what, what this looks like. So we're basically putting um, the image data as well as the, the text data into the same vector space. Uh, and you can see here we have an image of um, two dogs in the snow which then the text of two dogs in the snow, they, those two vectors are very close to each other um, because you know, the context is, is kind of the same, um, same there. So um, we're basically running the entire Superbase stack locally here. So we get kind of our API URL, we get a GraphQL URL, um, we have our database URL, so if we're kind of connecting directly to the database, we can, we can use the, the Postgres URL here. Uh, and then also we have um, a Superbase Studio, um, and you can run that uh, locally as well, which is quite exciting. So if you're you know, somewhere where you don't have internet and have it running, you can actually develop you know, kind of offline, uh, so to speak. Uh, so we have our default project here. Uh, we can kind of look at the table editor. We have sort of our public schema. We have a bunch of other schemas. So as I mentioned, we have kind of this auth service that sits on top of the database. And so we have kind of all the, um, the tables here in, in, in a separate schema there. And so if we now look at um, this example here, and I'm, I'm just using uh, poetry uh, to run this, which is sort of... Um, kind of like NPM, but for, for Python, let's put it like that. Um, and so here I'm just using uh, VEX. So VEX is our uh, Python client for um, uh, vector uh, handling, handling vectors and embeddings. Um, and so I have here my database connection. So I'm basically just instantiating um, a VEX client with my database connection. So this is here locally on my machine. I have my seed method. So I create my client. Uh, I create a new collection that I call image vectors. Uh, and we're using the OpenAI clip model here, which translates our images and our text into um, this uh, vector with 512 dimensions, right? Um, uh, and then I uh, have my model, so we're using the uh, OpenAI clip model. And then I just have uh, a couple of images um, just here from, um, 
maybe just remember those images. Uh, they'll be in the ex exam later. Um, so this is the couple images we have. They're just from uh, Unsplash. Uh, and so we're uh, just encoding them here as a vector. Uh, and then what we're doing is we're just using our um, images collection and we're just upserting um, our vectors here. And we can specify some uh, metadata that we can also later use for uh, kind of um, filtering um, in, in the query later on. Right, and then we're just saying, okay, we inserted the images and um, we are creating an index. So after we're upsetting kind of the images, um, we're basically creating an index to make the, uh, the vector uh, proximity search kind of more uh, efficient. So let's say poetry run uh, seed. And so um, we're doing all this, uh, what I just mentioned, we're generating our vectors um, we're upsorting them into the database, we're creating our in index. And so now if we go back to um, our locally running, so this is running on localhost, kind of our, our um, dashboard, we now have a new schema uh, called VEX. Um, and then here, this is our uh, collection that we created, so this is our image vectors. Uh, you can see we have uh, our IDs. These are our vectors, um, so uh, you can see the column type here is vector, so that's um, the, the column type that PG vector um, allows us to store um, vectors, I think, of up to 2,000 dimensions, uh, something like that. And then we have some metadata here, um, which is just uh, JSONB, so we can use that to, to filter later, later in our query. Um, so that, that's it, right? That was pretty, pretty easy. So now we can do, um, we can perform some searches here. Uh, again, we're creating our client. Now in this case, we already have our collection. So we uh, just get kind of a reference to our um, image vectors uh, collection. Uh, again, we're using our OpenAI clip um, model. Uh, and so now in this case, we're getting a query string uh, from our arguments. We're encoding the query string into the same uh, vector space as our images. And now we're just doing a query with our query vector, which is our text string. Um, we're just limiting it here to the most uh, relevant result. And then we can also filter on kind of the, um, the metadata where we can just say, OK, uh, we won't only want to uh, look at kind of uh, vectors that represent sort of uh, JPEG um, images, for example. And then we're just getting our result, uh, and we'll just open up um, the result. So this is where it comes in handy if you remembered what was in the pictures earlier, because we're going to run some searches. OK, who wants to start? Uh, I think I need to run search. What should we search for? Open Sorry? And open field. Open field? Yeah. OK. Right, and so ideally now, and the reason why I called these one, two, three, four, there we go. I think that's where you applaud. <laughs> now, I mean, right? I think it is quite impressive because like, if you think about, okay, you, you, you use this like on a daily basis, you use something like Google Images, right? And you, you can just search for like me on a bike, um, not me, like yourself on a bike. Uh, and it actually shows you all the pictures of you on a bike. Um, and, but the, the tech behind it, right, is like if you think, okay, how do I actually implement this? Here you go. It's just a couple lines of, of, of Python code. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, I could have been cheating here somehow. Uh, so maybe should we try another one? Just throw them out. Laptop. Laptop. Well, I mean... That's interesting because we didn't have anything that's close to a laptop. So let's see what this model thinks is the closest to a, to a laptop. <laughs> to be fair, on your lap here, there could be, could be a laptop, right? We don't know. Maybe actually, maybe the model knows a lot more than, um, than, than we do. Now that would be pretty mind blowing if that was actually the case. Maybe fruit? Let's see, we did have some uh, grapes in there. Yes, so we get, we get our grapes. Um, anyone? Anything else? We did have, um, 
we did have a bike in front of a red brick wall. Obviously, if I put that in, that might be a bit too easy. But um, maybe if we just say vehicle. Uh, I think the bike was kind of the closest contextually to what we had as, yes, very good. It's like I practiced this. Um, what else do we have? OK, we had. Uh, so these are sort of both, I guess, flowers. No, I mean, oh, let's see. What, what, what happens if we put flower? Anyone has an idea how this model was trained? I don't know. Do we get the? D yes. Okay. I think I think that's that's fair enough. Um, How is something abstract like happy? Happy? Okay. That's true. Like, any any predictions? What uh, what's happy? <laughs> that is a happy remote worker working in a field. Fantastic internet connection. They are happy. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so the point I'm trying to make here is obviously right. Like the math behind this is fairly complex. And but like for me, I don't have much knowledge of kind of the AI world. I don't have much knowledge of Python. And yet, somehow a fun little demo came came out. Right. And so that's kind of kind of what we're trying to do in general. We're trying to make Postgres more accessible to kind of a broader audience of developers. And here with sort of Superbase Vector as well, we're trying to make it easier to you know, allow you to, to build kind of AI-enabled um, applications.